Shortly after the Civil War, Joseph C. Green moved from Poughkeepsie, New York, to Omaha, Nebraska, where he established himself as a violinist, a brass player, and band leader, and he took control of the Seventh Ward Military Band. Joe's son, George Hamilton Green, Sr., took charge of the band in the middle 1890s. He was in his late 20s and was an accomplished cornet soloist and band leader and made a name for himself in Omaha and beyond. In the early 1890s, George and his wife Minnie had their first two sons, Joseph Green and George Hamilton Green. The Green household in Omaha was teeming with music and as traveling bands came through the likes of John Philip Sousa, Liberati, and P.G. Lowry would be guests at their home. The boys were enthralled with the xylophone and begged their father to buy one. He did, but they both needed practice time, so young George made his own xylophone and became a world-class performer. and especially boxing. In his later life, he took up golf. That was safer. After a boxing match, he had a solo performance in Chicago with a big bandage on his nose, and that ended his boxing career. At the age of seven, their youngest brother, Louis, was playing the violin and piano and trying to catch up with his older brothers. In 1916, George got a contract from the Edison Phonograph Company to record six solo performances on Edison diamond disc and cylinders. Then the relation with Edison expanded and until the company went out of business in 1929, George, his brother Joe, and the Green Brothers Novelty Orchestra and All-Star Trio had a very close relationship with Edison and recorded about 150 different sides. George's first regular engagement was at Rector's in New York with Earl Fuller's band. George was gaining a reputation as the finest xylophonist in the world and was soon sought after by other musicians in the New York area. Two of those were Wheeler Wadsworth and Victor Arden. They formed the All-Star Trio and recorded extensively for many record labels. Here's Dottie Dimples by George and Victor Arden. In 
1919, Joe left the Sousa Band after a four-year stint where he was the featured xylophone soloist and a percussionist. Joe joined his brother George in New York where they formed the Green Brothers Novelty Bands. These bands became the most popular bands in the country and sold millions and millions of recordings. George and Joe were both composers, but George wrote many popular songs and classical songs and also method books, How to Play the Xylophone. He had a correspondence course with over 4,000 pupils. Some of them became very well-known players. One of George's students was Dorothy Remsen, who became a legendary harpist and studio musician. Other notables were Lionel Hampton and Red Norvo. The Green Brothers remained extremely popular and recorded on virtually every record label of the day. Here's a Columbia. In 1928, the Green Brothers were approached by Walt Disney to do something that had not been done before, coordinate music for a cartoon. The cartoon was Steamboat Willie, the first Mickey Mouse cartoon, and then they also did the Skeleton Dance and the Opry House. In 1931, George joined the B.A. Rolfe Orchestra with Sammy Herman. George replaced Harry Brewer, but Sammy and George became very close friends. The Green Brothers continued to be the busiest band in New York, and it shows it by the thousands of records that they made. Here's one of their all-time favorites, but it's just a smattering of the work that they did. Enjoy this. Yes! We have no bananas, we have no bananas today. We string beans and onions, kabaddis and scullions, and all kinds of fruit and say. We have an old-fashioned tomato, Long Island potato, but yet we have no bananas. days a little competition never hurt either. There was a virtuoso saxophone player named Rudy Weedoft who wrote a song called Saxophobia. Now here's Green's new novelty orchestra playing Saxophobia.
Well, not to be outdone, Joe Green responded with his version of xylophonia. We lost Joe in 1939, but Joe had a great career working with Sousa and working with his brother, and then had a radio show during the Great Depression that was sponsored by General Motors. His salary was $64,000 a year. That's over a million dollars by today's standards. Not bad for a xylophone player from Omaha. And so commences a program of rhythmic and colorful melodies presented for your entertainment by the Novelty Marimba Band, under the direction of Joe Green, who has chosen as the opening selection, A Bunch of Roses. After Joe's death, George retired from music and moved to Woodstock, New York, where he had a very successful career as a cartoonist. His cartoons appeared in the most highly circulated magazines of the day, but it's his musical legacy that will live forever. youngest of the Green Brothers, and he went on to become Kate Smith's accompanist, the manager and guitarist of the Ferdy Grofe Orchestra, and he introduced the world to the electric guitar in 1935. After that, he got into radio production and became the producer and director of Don McNeil's Breakfast Club from 1941 until the end of World War II. He then moved into television production and had a very fruitful career, but in jingle writing and in the advertising business. Hi, Hat Hattie from Cincinnati, Ohio, written by Les O'Keefe and Lou Green, our producer, and a nice one indeed. If it wasn't for the Green Brothers' mother, Minnie, lots of this information would have been lost forever. When I was a young boy, I discovered the trunk that was loaded with programs, instruction books, a log book of all the recording sessions, arrangements, pictures, newspaper clippings, the works. It's all in the trunk. Thanks a lot, Minnie. I also discovered Alabama Moon, a song that George wrote, and it sold over a million copies in six months. And it's still being performed today. Here's Nexus in a recent concert in Woodstock, New York.
Hi, I'm Lou Green. I hope you enjoyed the presentation of the Green Brothers. And I hope you liked the music that was in that presentation too. Now you can own this six CD set of the Green Brothers Masters of the Xylophone. This has some of the best of their performances from 1916 into the 1930s. The six CD set includes this nice little booklet with a lot of information about the Green Brothers and their escapades through the music world. It's only $49.95 plus $5 shipping and handling in the U.S. and you can purchase it right here. This is the P.O. Box in Darien, Connecticut, P.O. Box 67. And I do take PayPal at Luhorn at AOL.com. Thank you. Now for the but wait there's more part of this presentation. I found a box of these LPs that were recorded by George Hamilton Green's brother, that's my dad, in the late 1960s. This includes many of George's most famous compositions like Triplets, Ragtime Robin, Cross Corners, Charleston Capers, and there's more. This is a red vinyl LP. They're all brand new and unplayed. In this package, there's also a little pamphlet of tips on how to play the xylophone by George Hamilton Green. Some of you might find this helpful. The package is $25 postpaid from Green's Music at Post Office Box 67, Darien, Connecticut. It's a limited supply, so act now. All the information is right here. So once again, it's limited, there's not many left, you can have one, and it's a real keepsake. Thank you. Oh, 